Hey, this is Mike White. Um, I'm going to do a quick design here and just a redrawing is what I call this and just show how to do, um, you know, take some artwork that was designed in Cricut Design Space and actually redo it in Inkscape um, so that we have some really good pixels because, you know, problem with um, the problem with this image, you know, is is that it is the original that's Photoshop so just ignore this part the original that I got was 475 by 525 so it's only suitable for printing about an inch and three quarters uh, inch and a half and you know of course we want to make it a t-shirt we want to make eight by eight um, or something like that you know we want it to be bigger than an inch and a half and you know if you zoom in on the image you can see that there's there's some problems because remove BG took the background out it's definitely just you know the snipping tool um, you know the way that people tell the other people how to get things out of design space it's not good and, and and it's very pixelated and you know I don't have the image of the bulldog yet I'm waiting on that but we're just going to show how to achieve you know these kinds of effects um, that we see here in Inkscape and bear with me you know this isn't scripted or anything I'm just making this on the fly so I have found out what the font is and it's Umberland Slab. And so I'm just going to place uh, right here in the middle. Inkscape's free, by the way. So uh, that's why I'm showing it um, as, as the tool of choice. You know, as far as, you know, it's just a free application. You don't have to pay anything. Uh, it's open source. Um, so anyway, I just typed that out. And I'm holding control while I'm scaling it so that it'll stay uh, proportional. You know, I think we're actually gonna end up stretching this out a little bit anyway, but, um, you know, keeping it proportional uh, while you, while you um, at first, until you're ready to stretch it out. Now I see it, you know, I look at it. Yeah, that's definitely getting stretched out to copy this design. So we're just gonna pull that up and kind of get things going in the right direction. I'll put it right here about in the middle. And now I'm just gonna draw a curve so let me get organized. I know I'm going fast here. I'm trying not to waste everybody's time. So there's a layer. So this is the layer that we're on. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I hit Control X. I'm going to create a new layer above the current here. And I'm just going to do Control Alt V. That pastes right in place. Uh, if you just get do Control V, it might just paste it wherever your mouse cursor is, you know, which is fine. Um, and then I'm going to lock this layer that's, that's the, the layer that we're copying from. And now I can just like hide my artwork layer and, and I, you know, I might rename this. We'll just say original and then I'm going to call this one artwork. So now I've got a little bit of organization there. That didn't work, did it? Artwork. I don't know why that's not letting me type. Come on. Come on, Inkscape. I'm trying to sell you here. All right. Artwork. Awesome. So I'm going to turn that layer off so that I can just look at the original. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a curve, okay, and I'm clicking back over here, and then I'm using the plus key to zoom in, plus and minus over there by the numpad. I think the other plus and minus works too. So yeah, any plus and minus on your keyboard will work. And then I'm just going to add another layer above the current, and I'm going to call it curve. I'm just staying organized. And I want to grab this uh, tool right here. And I'm just going to draw a curve. So this is the um, the pen tools, what I'd call it. It says draw Bezier curves. So it can actually do it. It has a couple of modes. One mode is the spiral path mode, which makes really pretty curves. Um, and then there's just the regular like B spline path. I think it's I don't I guess you check that on. I don't know much about the B spline. I just use either the Bezier. Uh, or the Spiro path, and and for this, I think we're going to be just fine doing a Bezier path. So I'm just going to click here, and I'm going to hold Control to go straight across and click right here, and then I'm going to hit Enter to confirm that, and I'm just going to make sure this looks nice. So our stroke style, I'm going to change this to PX. So we're at one pixel on the stroke. I bump that up so we can see it a little better and it's black. Okay, great. Okay, so now I've got my, my curve started even though it's just a straight line right now. Um, and I'm just gonna aim for the middle here. 
and we'll add a point. So I don't have to aim, excuse me. I'm just going to actually, I've just selected it. I switched to my node tool and I've selected it. And I'm just gonna hit the plus. And if I select these two points and then hit the plus, I should get one right in the middle. And that's exactly what I want. And now I'm just gonna hold control. Nope, control Z that. I'm just gonna select just that point. And I'm gonna hold control as I go up and that should lock it so that it's, um, what am I trying to say? So, so that it's, so that it goes, it went straight up, okay? Um, and then I'm just, I just chose to make it symmetric and then I'm gonna choose to make it auto smooth. And then I'm just gonna drag it out till it's actually smooth. So I'm gonna hold control. I'm wanting that to be symmetrical. Let's just make sure. Yeah, that, that way it stays symmetrical. And I'm just gonna make a, you know, a pleasant looking curve. It might not be exactly like the original, but it's close. Okay, so now I have that. So now I'm gonna go back to my layers panel over here. And I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna turn on my artwork layer. And I'm gonna select this and select this. And then I think it's path. Oh, it's text, put on path. Let's see how that works. There we go. So now I've got some kerning issues and I'm just going to, kerning being like the, the, the space in between. Cause I, I need to make this a smaller front and then stretch it, I think, to get the same effect. So I'm just gonna select all of that and then just make this font smaller. There's the font size. Let's just take it down a lot. And then let's see if we can just bump it up. Let's just type it in. So let's make it 100 and see what we get. That's pretty close. It looks like it's going to the edge of the curve. All right. And then to make it look like the rest of this, what do I need to do? Let's see if we just stretch it up. Don't really like that. I kind of feel like we need to squish it in. You know, obviously any any application that you're going to work with is going to is going to work differently. Let me pause and play with this so I don't waste your time. Okay, I took a second to think about it, and I think I'm just going to talk to my customer and make sure that she's happy with with the results that I end up giving her, and we'll just see if if this is going to make her happy, because you know it is going to be really hard to make it exactly like the other, just because of the different ways that the programs work. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I can't, you know, we might be able to for sure, but I'm going to do my best here to just, you know, fix this up. Okay, so I've, I've been playing a bit and I think what's going to give me the results is I made the curve a lot less extreme and now I'm going to try putting it back on the path. So I, I removed it. I'm going to put it back on because I noticed that, you know, when I stretch it afterwards, you know, I'm getting a closer effect, uh, you know, to what I want to see. So um, let's just adjust that font one more time. I think we went, we went with 100 and that worked out for us. I don't know why that's not working now. Okay, I got it back. So now I'm just going to stretch this up after it's on the curve. Yeah, see that behavior? It's just interesting the way that works, you know? So let's let's actually try something else. We're going to go ahead and apply it. So I'm gonna say path, object to path. And what that's going to do is that's actually gonna turn these into, these letters are now paths. It's no longer editable, you know? Um, and then I'm just going to group it all. So let's just get, let's see if I can select that curve. I'm going to go ahead and just move that out of the way. And I'm going to actually turn off that layer. So I didn't even have to move it. Let's just turn off that layer. And then all of these letters are now individual, but I am going to put them together. Let's just put path combine. Let's see if that worked. Yep. Now it's all just one thing. And then let's try stretching it up and see if we get a similar effect. 
And, and I think, you know, even even more, even less of a curve would have helped, you know, to, to match this look, you know. So, you know, it could take a while to actually get it exactly like it. And I'm just going to, I'm going to pause the recording and play around until I get what I want. Okay, so I got a result and it's not perfect, um, but it's certainly closer and it's good enough. You know, I think it's going to be, it's going to be enough to make uh, everybody happy. So now we're going to talk about fill and stroke. So let's get the fill going. So I don't need any stroke and I want fill and I'm just going to click on the, um, whatever that tool is called and, and just have that, uh, put that color in. Okay. So the rest of this should be pretty easy. So now we're just going to come down here and use the same font. I'm just clicking and I'll just type the EST period. I think there was a period. And then we'll just take this and scale it down. And I'm going to hold control to keep the, yeah, I think that's going to work out perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm very relieved to see that the square period is also part of the original design. I'm just going to stretch that out. And if that doesn't quite fit, let's just stretch it over a little bit. We'll just kind of fit this to be close. Awesome. And then we're just going to, I'm just going to copy that and control alt V. That's that paste in place. And that way these letters will be the same. We're just going to adjust that over here. I'm just holding control as I'm sliding it over and that's going to make it, um, stay locked on a plane. I use that, that trick all the time. And so we'll just pull this over. And that font doesn't look exactly the same, so let's just make sure. Let's look at our fonts. I don't think it's switched. It may have. Let's just make sure. Is that font? I don't want that umbrella in. Let's see, text. Text and font. Let's open that panel back up. Text, text and font. There it is. I think my computer's locking up a little bit. Give me a second. So I don't exactly know what that font is uh, up here in the 1884. It's different, but I'm just gonna go with it. You know, hopefully this will work. And, you know, we're just gonna put this right here. And I'm going to center things here in a little while, but this is this is good enough for now. And then I'm just going to grab my uh, box tool, and we're just going to put a bar here that is got a rounded radius on it, which we're just going to adjust. I like to switch this to PX because it's just the way my brain works. And we'll put a one PX. I might see a tiny little round on that corner. It is so small if it is there. So. Um, yeah, we got that set to one PX. I think we were going to be in good shape. I'm just going to move that up and just kind of look at it again and make sure I've got that. So what I did is I just hit shift and then, you know, uh, shift in the up arrow to, to handle that. And sometimes I'll just zoom in. I really want to make sure I'm perfect there. Yeah, I think that's good. So now we'll just take this, copy it. I'm going to control alt V. And then I'm just going to hold control to stay locked on the plane and go down and line that up. And it looks like maybe the original is a little bit off. Uh, I hope that's the case and it's not me that's off, but that's okay. I'm just going to come down here and, and keep it and keep it consistent. Okay. So now I'm ready to turn my text, the colors, but I have the color. I don't have the bulldog. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the original. So I'm just looking at the work that I'm doing. All right. And I'm just going to center some things. So let's look at how to do that. Let's look at align and distribute. I'm centering relative to page. So I want to center this, 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 and this. So I'm just going to hit this, this uh, center on vertical axis. And now everything's centered. And then, you know, these, I'm, I'm sort of having an eyeball. I'm sure there's a good way to center those. 
But if I center them like this, that's not what I want. So um, I think I can group them. Let's hit Control G and we'll group them. And then we'll center those. So they, they were pretty centered to begin with. So all of that's now centered. And then let's just do our color. So we're going to go to Fill and Stroke. I'm going to click on the fill. It's even got my last fill already figured out. And there you have it. I'm just waiting on my bulldog. All right. Thanks. Okay, so now we have our bulldog. And thank you so much for that. And then I'm going to open this up in Photoshop. And the first thing I want to show you is the size. So you want to look at the size. So it's only 361 by 441. So again, like this bulldog is only suitable to be printed um, at something that's like, you know, an inch and a half. Now it's only, it's going to be a small part of this other design. So this may very well work for this other design. So, um, you know, the, the challenges with this is that it's got, it, it's on this shadow and it's on this background. So I'm going to show you how to pull that off. So uh, I'm going to go around it here. Ooh, see, that's a messy, that's a messy select. Let's see if we can lower our tolerance. Um, I'm going to take this down to 40. And I'm going to try to select again. I'm actually going to expand it. Let's, blowing an image up does not fix an image. But it is so small. I'm just going to go ahead and blow it up to 1,200. Um, as you can see, it's still a little... I mean, it's, it's, it's better than it was at the smaller size. And there's more pixels for it to work with now. So it can actually select... Um, you know, it, it can do a better selection. So I'm going to take that selection... And then I'm going to do a new layer here. And I'm actually going to do a layer from background here. And that way this is like a layer, it's not a fixed background image. And I'm just gonna duplicate that layer. And then I'm gonna turn one of them off. And that way, I, you know, no matter what happens, I'm not gonna lose the artwork in case I mess up. So now I've got this selection and I'm just, I'm just gonna use, you know, I've used this circle to select and I'm gonna paint. Um, just black uh, on everywhere where that you know selection was all right and all I'm gonna do there is is that's just gonna let me select outside that so if I go ahead and turn this off now I should be able to use my magic wand tool to select around the outside of that and that's the actual selection I'm going to use I'm gonna do select inverse and that's just gonna give me just the bulldog and then I'm just going to cut it off this layer. I'm going to make sure I have the right layer selected and hit Control X. And then I'm going to hit Control Shift V, just like in Inkscape. That's the paste in place command. And then we should be able to turn off these other layers. And we've got the background. We've got the bulldog pretty, pretty well taken care of here. Okay. Last thing I'm going to do is do image trim by transparent pixels. And now I'm just going to do file export. We'll do a quick export as PNG. I'm going to put that, yeah, in my downloads folder is fine. And then we're just gonna drag that in. So we're gonna go back over to Inkscape and we're just gonna drag that guy in from the downloads folder, Mike. And there we have it. I'm gonna choose embed. I don't wanna link it. Oh, you know, and see, I see this little this little edge, and I don't like it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And while we're here, let's look at our document. I'm going to see if we can turn on the checkerboard background, because that's going to help us see uh, transparency a little bit better. And let's just, let's just go back to Photoshop and see if we can't clean up that edge. Let's actually look at our example artwork that we were given. Where is it? Here we go. And I don't see the white there, but see, I don't know that that's really what we want. I mean, you can see what a mess it's done. You know, the remove BG is taking out the eyeball. It's taken away all that white. We might like that white stroke around the outside, but what I don't like is this. I just, I just added a new layer there. I'm just going to paint black um, back behind it so we can really see it. Oh, you can't. <laughs> um, let's paint white back there. Hold on. Let's just switch that to white. 
Because what I saw was this little soft edge around the outside. And, and I definitely, you know, if I want to keep that stroke, that's fine. Um, that white stroke looks nice. But I don't want um, that extra bit. So I'm just going to expand my canvas. And I'm doing this so that I have some, like, room to work. I didn't expand the image. I just expanded the canvas. And we'll go ahead and delete that layer. And I'm going to try to get in tighter. So I'm just going to do select modify expand I'm going to expand by two pixels and that should just come in a little bit and hopefully get rid of that outer edge and then I'll make sure I have the right layer selected and I'm just going to hit delete and then control D I'm going to put another layer back there and we'll just look at it and see if we've got yeah look at that we got rid of that edge so that's awesome all right, and then we're just going to go back, image, trim, transparent pixels, file, export, export as ping. There's our dog. We'll replace it. And then I'm going to pull in from my downloads folder and embed. All right, awesome. Now I'm just holding control while I shrink this down. I'm just going to get it sort of the right size. And then let's make sure we look at our original. I think I've still got that on another layer. Here we go. So we're just going to go to layers. I'm going to turn the original back on. And I'm going to try to size this to the original. And it's snapping. This, this snapping is enabled up here in the right-hand corner. That's why I was doing that jumping. So I'm just going to turn that off and then just put that really close to what the original artwork had. And then I'm going to play with aligning it just to make sure I feel like this is aligned. Sometimes, you know, you don't want it to be perfectly centered because it'll actually give a better effect. Let's just look at that. Turn off the original again. See, he might look better slightly off, but I'm, I'm going to go with what's here, and I'm going to call this one done. So let's just finish this up. We're going to go to File, Document Properties, and we're going to choose Resize Page to Content. So I'm going to resize. I'm actually going to change this to PX. It's just the way my brain works. I like PX. And then Resize Page to Drawing or Selection. So it's actually resized to that selection, so I'm going to Control-Z that. I want to unselect that and then resize page to draw your selection. Awesome. So that's gotten rid of all my white space, uh, which is really important when you're uploading images. And it's also kind of given me a, a better picture of how things are framed. I think it's really good. So now we're just going to do export. Um, we could upload this as an SVG. There's no problem with that. Okay, so I just wanted to finish up and say that you could set this up just as an SVG, uh, and that would be just fine. But truly, with this embedded image, I, I don't, I don't believe in that practice. Like you know, it's not an SVG because I have an embedded uh, image in the middle of it. You know, so it's not, not everything's vector, and so maybe the purist in me just wants to make sure that we actually uh, export it as a PNG. So I'm going to do file. Uh, does that make sense? You know, I don't want it to be tricking somebody thinking that it's infinitely scalable because it's not. I mean, the Bulldog was only 361 when we got it. So, um, all right, let's look at this. We're going to export it. Uh, the first thing you do is you do export as and then you decide where you're going to save it. Um, I'm going to save it in my redrawings folder and I am going to call it that because that was what the original image name was. And I'm just going to save it right over that. And then I'm going to adjust the width. So the thing to do is, is, is you want 300 pixels per inch. This is a source image now. So like this is a source, you know, um, the bulldog's not because, you know, it, it, it came from a different place. But, you know, the, the fair estate, all this artwork that we've done with the text and the, and the boxes, that is source. So, I mean, it's, 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 you can export it at any size you want and it will be perfect. 
It's not like expanding pixels. You know, it's actually just this is real. And so I, I want to make sure I export it at a nice size. I mean, and, and I want to make sure that, you know, it'll fit for anything that I might want to do with this artwork. So, I mean, if I want to put it on a back of a, of a jacket or something, I think 3,600 pixels is a good size. That'll give me 12 inches. Um, you know, I can have it 12 inches tall. And, and you know, to really, it, it actually can be uh, a different size. You know, it's, it's uh, what, I, what do I mean by that? It, you know, you can even make it larger. You can't take something from an inch and a half and make it 12 inches. But you can take something that's already 12 inches and make it like 14 or 17. Like that's going to be fine. So um, I'm just going to take the dimension here 36 and make it 3600. So, I, you know, you don't need to have 3600 on both because it's not a square image. So, you know, I'm just going to one dimension, make it 12 inches. You don't want to go like super big. I see that too. People are like, well, I made it 5,000 pixels. Well, pixels work like a pizza. So the bigger you make them, uh, you know, it, it takes up more and more space. And so that's going to make it like just sluggish to upload or download. Lots of hard drive space. You know, you don't want to waste it. But, you know, if I save this document um, and save that in there as well, then I'm going to actually have, you know, the, the source document as well. So I can always come back to it, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and export this. It's telling me that we're going to replace it. Yes, I do. All right. So that's that one. Um, and I'm going to cut that off there. Thanks and have a great day.